Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So, um, I'm almost done with my cold, so you guys won't have to uh, listen to me sniffle much more. Uh, it's clearing up nicely. Um, it is the middle of March uh, 2014 right now, and um, I just wanted to thank you guys uh, for your loyal viewership and all your comments and all your clicks and all that stuff. I recently passed uh, 10,000 subscribers, which was is kind of a milestone for me. I never really thought it was going to grow into anything like that. And uh, the other amazing thing uh, to me is over 1 million views. Now, you know, in the in the YouTube world, that's kind of chicken feed, but uh, um, this is a pretty narrow subject, I would say. So um, that we're that we're working with here. Anyway, I just wanted to thank you guys for all that and uh, all your clicks and, uh, and all your comments and all your likes, all that stuff makes a difference and I really appreciate it and uh, uh, who knows where this thing's going to go, I don't know, um, but I'm having fun doing it and I just want to let you guys know. So, okay, we're building another meatloaf here for Monday and um, I got a couple of subjects. We're going to pick up on the pipette rack and do some more work on that. We got some more uh, setups in the mill that uh, you guys will like. Um, we've got um, some good comments on that um, and uh, uh, it's, it's actually kind of an interesting subject. So uh, we're going to work on that. Um, went to the flea market again and you know what that means. And it was a good one. So we're going to look at some tools um, and we got some uh, boxes uh, that showed up last week. And uh, we'll take a peek at that. And pretty much guaranteed it's too much for one episode, so there'll probably be a little follow on. Um, we've got lathe test cuts to do. Um, I got another little tailstock tool to show you guys. Um, it is a fun filled meatloaf. So uh, let's get an apron going here and uh, let's go look at this pipette rack and some of this other stuff. Okay, so we got our, uh, our pipette rack we're working on here. Um, we got some more of this starboard material. Um, so we're going to make this upper part and we're going to make this lower shelf today. Um, we already did this. Uh, I'm probably going to wait to poke the holes in that uh, just because. Um, anyway, no, no particular reason, but I'm just going to wait. So what I want to do is uh, uh, measure uh, these holes here and uh, I'm going to do it a little different here because I, I went and bought myself a, a set of, uh, of uh, plug gauges here and these are just precision pins here that uh, um, actually you know what I think I need the other set there. Yeah, I need the other set. Anyway, I bought, uh, these were on sale uh, from Travers and it was a good deal. And I think I mentioned that uh, even the offshore brand of plug gauges is fine. Um, this is a very controllable technology. Uh, pretty much anybody can do it and do a good job of it. And you know, you can spot check these with your, uh, your micrometer to assure yourself that uh, um, you're getting what, you're, uh, what you paid for. Bigger and uh, I was uh, actually uh, pleasantly surprised that these weren't uh, individually wrapped, and uh, I didn't have to screw around with that. So uh, um, let's see, we'll probably look three hundred something. Like that. So these are one thousandths increments here, and uh, um, it just makes it. Uh, Okay, that's, now these holes are kind of chowdered up. They're kind of chowdered up a little bit because they've had solvent dribbled dribbled in them, and it's you know it's not particularly a fussy uh, um, a fussy requirement. It's just an interesting way to measure holes. Okay, so what's neat about uh, plug gauges is you know when you put them in there, you get to you get to wiggle it around and feel it, right? So you can, you, you get a better judgment of fit. So I'm looking at that going, okay, that's kind of a loosey goosey fit there, right? So let's jump up a couple thousands here. And we put that in there and you go, hey, that's the fit I want right there, okay? 
So you say, great, that's the fit I want. What is that? 297. Well, that's kind of hard to do with calipers, right? Um, so these are relatively inexpensive uh, until you get into the big fatties. Um, the smaller ones are quite reasonable and it's just a very, very slick way of measuring holes. Um, anyway, so what is that? What was that again? 297, all right. So we're somewhere around uh, 300 thousandths for that, which, you know, we'll pick out a convenient drill size uh, right around there. And then I'll go ahead and, well, gee, I can just do that. Now those are quite a bit smaller. Back to the other set. Okay, so that's pretty good there. And what is that? 215? 215, right? Bango, done. And you know, I get a I get a I get a feel check too, which is really nice. Oh gee, can you see that? Okay. So I get a feel check with that. So I can say, oh yeah, that's that's the fit I want. Okay. Okay, so uh, let's get Let's get, uh, I got a drawing already. Uh, let's, uh, let's get cracking on these guys. And we'll just pop over to the bandsaw, knock these these off and um, and then we'll just mill that in square measurement and see how much we got to take off. Well, the length of this is uh, over 12 inches, so I had to pull out the, the larger calipers here. And uh, these are Minatoyo Absolutes. Uh, they happen to be carbon fiber ones, so they're real light. Um, I got a, a, a good deal on these on Craigslist. Uh, it was only a couple hundred bucks. Um, you know, normally these are pretty expensive, so. Um, but they're nice and light. So we're 13,942. Okay. All right, so let's plug that in. 13.942, preset, all right. Oops. Let's see, negative. 13.39, no, 392. No, three, three. <laughs> 941. <laughs> That's what you call dyslexia there. Negative 13.943 preset. Okay. So now uh, I, I entered that number into the DRO so I can just mill that edge off uh, until I touch my number and I know my length is good. So, okay, first setup here. So we got this and we want to poke a bunch of holes in this here out at the ends and then along it here. But you can see it's, you know, it's not going to be very cooperative if we're pushing on it here. So how do we support that? You can put it down on the table or something like that on a sacrificial piece. But gee, I don't feel like stripping the vise off and uh, doing all that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a piece of material in here, a strong back. and that's you know relatively flat and then we'll put a sacrificial piece on top of that that we can that we can drill into um, so we get a nice clean exit on the hole and then we'll just clamp that down on top so what I got is these uh, and this is just a spreader bar and these I have them so I can uh, mount larger pieces onto the table here but this just happens to be a, a uh, a convenient uh, p 
piece of material here, okay? So let's pop that up there, and then we'll sandwich this whole this whole mess together. We'll pick up this corner, and then we'll and we'll drill some holes. Um, so let's start with just making our life easier. Clampers over here. So these are uh, your Johnny Woodworker clamps here, but uh, they uh, are kind of nice in that you can uh, zip them up pretty quick, like so. Okay, so now I got a nice, I got a nice fence out the back there. Another one on there, and this is just so I don't have to. You know, I'll take these off, or maybe I won't, I don't know. Hey, look at that, I got, them <laughs> I got them up high enough right out of the gate. Okay, so we got a nice fence that we can shove our loose piece under there and our, our real piece. Let's actually, you know what, let's get rid of that. And uh, then I'll just put a couple of clamps on that and uh, we're off to the races. Okay, so we're back over here on AutoCAD real quick. Um, I want to show you one of the real powerful things about, um, you know, doing a computer layout here. So what we're looking at here is we're looking at this, um, the top plate that we just set up in the mill over there. And, you know, here's our hole locations, right? So what I can do is I've actually, you know, uh, picked up with the edge finder here in this corner. So what I can do is I can actually... Uh, um, set the uh, origin enter, to be that little point right there, okay? And then what I can do, and this is the cool part, is I can use what's called ordinate dimensioning here. So I'm going to pick ordinate dimensioning. I'm just going to verify that I got zero and I got zero, yes. Okay, so now here's the cool part. Doink, doink, doink. Etc. Oops, I missed that one. I misclicked. All right, so you can see now those are all absolute coordinates from the beginning. And oh, hey, look, I can do the Y's as well. Okay, so this is pretty powerful. All right, so now there's all my numbers from that point, which is really what I care about in the mill, right? If I've zeroed there, I just drive to those numbers and uh, I'm off to the races. And um, I don't have to, you know, go, oh, hey, wow, that's, uh, you know, inch and an eighth between each one, you know, one, two, three, four, five times inch and an eighth, blah, blah, blah. So I just pull it right off of the, uh, right off of the layout. And, uh, and you know, I can just erase all that if I don't want it in my way or whatever. Um, so that's um, why you should, you know, every machinist should learn some CAD system. Um, it's just a tool like an edge finder or an indicator. It helps you do your job. So, if, you know, I don't want to do some math. Let's just pretend for a second. So I'm just going to take an aligned dimension between that point and that point and go, all right, well, there's a number, right? It just did the math for me, right? Um, so you can take, you know, some, you can use it to do uh, analysis, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So you can create some geometry here, you know, like we did here. And, uh, and you, you know, you can figure out where intersections are or um, um, here's another good one here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and draw a circle here and I'm gonna draw it tangent, tangent, radius to these points right here. So it'll be tangent, tangent, and let's say 0.5 is our, uh, our radius. Okay, so what it did was it mathematically calculated where that circle belongs, it being tangent to that shoulder and tangent to that shoulder. Well, now I can just pull the dimensions off of here to the center of that, bango, math done. Okay, and oh, whoops, that's my end mill my one inch diameter end mill, so now I know how far from that corner I need to go in, okay? So you can do some very uh, um, 
some very useful analysis with this tool. And uh, like I said, it's just a tool. I'm not in love with it. And um, uh, I use it like a tool and uh, I put it away when I'm done with it. And then I'll get a couple other drills to uh, do the end features there. All right, we're putting our um, the shelf piece in now. And um, I had already picked up the edge on the other one. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop a pin in here of a known diameter. And I'm just using that as a stop. So I've offset it half that pin diameter, which is uh, around 10 millimeters or 3 a's. Um, so I'm just going to use that as a stop to quickly get this uh, second piece in position here for drilling. Okay, all right, there we go. No messing around and no, I didn't have to re-edge find anything, so. And, uh, oh, by the way, it's made by Noga. <laughs> okay, so next up, we got kind of an interesting setup. Um, I call it uh, going side saddle here. Um, and we get to use one of the, uh, the really nice features about a Bridgeport type mill. And some people wonder why they call them a turret mill. Um, you hear them called that sometimes. Well, we're gonna use that feature. And what we're doing here, um, this is our shelf piece. And I don't know if you remember, but it gets a little, it gets a little notch here to register the, the spring. And that's this little notch right here. So it's got a square edge notch and then a tapped hole into the edge of the piece, okay? Well, this thing's kind of tall here uh, for setting up in the vise. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go side saddle over here and uh, we're gonna come over here like this and uh, clamp this thing up to a, um, uh, probably an angle plate or a box parallel, something like that, and clamp this up, and then uh, we can do a little bit of end work over here at kind of our normal height. So uh, let's uh, let's get cracking there, huh? All right. So let's see here. And an angle plate here. We could do this like so, and clamp that up. Then we need strap clamps on that. And then we just clamp up to this and then we can do our, we can do our business, <laughs> do our business on the floor. <clears throat> and then uh, swap it in for end for the second side. I think what I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna use a different, this is it's microscopically easier to, uh, to uh, clamp down. This is a box parallel here, big one, and uh, this puts us up pretty good. Yeah, I kind of like that. Then we'll just drop a stud through there and, um, and clamp up to the side of that. So let me go grab uh, some uh, tie-down hardware. Okay, so we got a, we got a stud and a key nut, and we're, we're loose right now, so we're gonna I grab a one, two, three block and hold that up against there like that. And I'm just bringing it out flush with the front here. Get, get some finger tight on that. And then we've been talking about these wrenches, the three quarter, seven eighths wrench. Uh, one fits the drawbar, well the other one fits this. So we'll snug that down, okay. And you know, this isn't a, 
isn't a heavy duty setup here. Um, next thing we're gonna want, since we're gonna swap ends here, is we'll, we'll just put a little fence up like that. That way we can just flop it up against the fence and uh, it's all hunky-dory there. Um, this is some pretty light duty milling here, so uh, I think what we're gonna do, let's just go with the uh, Johnny Woodworker clamps here. And no, uh, you know, no offense uh, meant towards uh, woodworkers. Um, I just, you know, just use that as a, <laughs> you know, a colloquial term. I don't know, what do you call that? Okay, so we're gonna drop in like that. All right, and then we'll just, we're gonna leave it up proud of this edge. I don't wanna mill the, my nifty block there. So, I think we'll use this little Bessie right here. Like that. You know what? You know, that's one thing, you know, you, sometimes you need more than one hand, right? Let's do this. How about that? We'll go this way. Like that. All right. That's pretty good. Now I'll we'll put the Bessie clamp on. Like so. And I'm just going to put it right, kind of right where we're going to be working there. Like so, and that will be just absolutely plenty to hold that. Okay, so now what we gotta do is we're gonna use the turret feature of the mill, and we're gonna swivel over here and get in the operating range of this. And, um, and then uh, do, our, uh, do our milling. So these are uh, listening to turret bolts here. And I'm just gonna swivel over like so. nice features of these machines is you can really, they have a large range if you'll use the features that they've given you. So, um, okay, so we're going to pick up on this, this little guy here. We're going to mill a notch in that and drill and tap a hole in both ends. Okay, so we're all centered up here nicely. So now we're going to mill our, <coughs> we're going to mill our little, uh, our little notchicus here like that. Okay. Um, and it's one inch wide, so we got a couple of choices here. Um, we could actually just use a one inch end milling and go right through there. Remember, this notch is not particularly deep. But what I wanted to point out was when you have a big tool like this, it's generally bigger forces, okay? Um, even though this is an, e an easy material to cut. So if you have a what I would call not a heavy duty setup, which <clears throat> this would qualify as, um, it's probably better and more prudent to use a undersized end mill and kind of whittle away at that, okay? Um, it's just less prone to problems, the cutting forces are lower, and um, yeah, it's a little more work, but uh, you have a higher chance of um, <laughs> um, success, um, you know, or not having a problem. Um, as opposed to this. This is lumping around, uh, you know, it's, it's a long distance from the center of rotation, so those can snag pretty easily. 
So there's all kinds of stuff going on there and the forces are higher. So what we're going to do is pop this little uh, uh, quarter inch two flute in there and, uh, and mill that out. Okay. All right. Let me change tools and uh, we'll come right back. Okay. I think we're ready. Let's come over. What I'm going to do is uh, just touch off here and I'm going to zero my quill readout it's for my depth. All right. And um, I'm just going to take this whole thing in one whack here. Um, it's 60,000 steep. Go back to the center here. That's the center. All right, and then I'm going to establish the end points right there. Um, it's one inch wide. Quarter inch cutter, so I'm moving over 375. So that's one side. Back over here. 25. Get through. Take out the little island. Take out the little island. And that's it. Okay. And now I'm going to switch back to the uh, uh, switch back to the chuck, and we'll drill and tap a little hole down the center of that thing. Okay, so I got my tap drill and my tap. We're going to drill and tap this uh, 832. I'm just going to come down and touch that and zero my quill readout so that I know how deep I've drilled. Oop! Helps if it's in gear, there, Mr. Wizard. Okay. Um, It's a little over a half inch deep. Um, so this is soft plastic here, and I don't want to have I don't want to have any trouble here. So uh, I think what I'm going to do is what am I going to do? Uh, I'm going to loosen the collet and just use the the chuck as my tap wrench here. So let me do that. Back up. All right, so that's that's loose. I can turn it by hand. So oop. I'm just going to drop it down like so till I touch in the hole. And I'll lock the quill, and now I'm just going to turn this by hand. Oops. Theory, anyway, like that. So I'm pushing down a little bit, and I'm just spinning this by hand, and it's coming out of the collet, but it's also guiding it too. All right, that feels pretty good. And that's kind of a low, a low force uh, way of doing that. Let's get this out of here. All right. Okay. And. Oop, I gotta get my chip fisher and get that out of there. Okay, all right, so I think that's done. Uh, we knocked some chamfers on that. Um, and then we'll do the, uh, the end plates. Okay, so um, we're gonna put these in here now and we're gonna put some holes in here uh, and a hole through, he through the center and then down into there. So this will be kind of fun. Um, so I'm going to use my little fold down stop here because it just catches. All right. And then we'll clamp it like this. Now here's a little problem is you can see that moving. Okay. And I got no particular guarantee that these are very straight either, uh, you know, in this way or in this direction over that distance. So better that I clamp this to something that's kind of a known square. Let's uh, back up here. Let me open that up a little bit. And what I'm going to do, I've got some, uh, these are some blocks I made, I don't know, a long time ago. And 
they're one inch by two inch by six inch uh, precision, you know, machined uh, square and uh, parallel on the ends. So, um, and they're just just setup blocks, you know, for different things, kind of like this. Oh wow, I lucked out. So I'll make sure I'm against there, and then I'm just going to use this. This is just a. Uh, a Viagra block, I guess you'd call it. Um, so it's just a stiffener here to s help stiffen this, uh, the plastic plate. Okay, now the plastic plate still moves, but the steel one's solid. So, our handy dandy little uh, can't twist. So we're just, in fact, you can see it moving over to that one. So it, it was out. All right. So now I'm pretty safe using my uh, my DRO settings for uh, um, this corner here and the back jaw of the vise. Okay, so what we got to do? Uh, we're going to put uh, uh, 1032s in here, and then it'll be a quarter inch hole down through the center and down into the bottom. So let's go ahead with that. Okay, and I've already. You know, off camera, I re-zeroed my uh, stop there, so. Oops. Um, 250. And this stuff's actually pretty accurate. I was kind of surprised. Um, all right, so that's one. I gotta, I gotta go look at my drawing. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not gonna try guessing the numbers. Okay, so I'm ready here. Um, let's see. Anything crazy going on here? Not really. So I'm just going to zero my DRO. This is kind of nice. Um, a nice habit to get into when you're drilling plastics is if you have holes like this, drill them all the same. And the reason is because if this was acrylic, uh, for example, where you could see through it or polycarbonate, if, you're, if your drilled holes are not all the same depth all over your part, oh boy, does it look not good. So uh, it's just a nice habit to get into uh, to drill the to drill your um, uh, your tap drill holes all the same uh, the same depth. So I think we're just going to go in about a half inch here. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is since I have kind of a symmetric symmetric setup. I think I'm just going to flop this part around this time. Let's see how that works. You know, there's probably, in this particular case, no savings there. Um, you know, as opposed to driving over there. But uh, it's just good to talk about it, right? Okay. For some tapping action here. What do I want to do here? I think I'm going to use my. Once again, it's uh, soft plastic, so I'm just going to loosen up the uh, the collet here and just spin this by hand. Back down.
Okay. Um, okay, so I think we're ready to uh, do our uh, our center hole here. So let me uh, change the camera on a little bit, and we'll uh, do that. All right. So slide it down a little bit. Double check my numbers. Yes, I'm good. And then we're going to gingerly sneak through this. All right, so that's through. Now what I'm going to do is I get this uh, this big long one here. I'm going to drop the table down, and uh, this is going to be. Kind of like a drill bushing, basically, to help us with that uh, that other bit there. Actually, a smart guy would. A smart guy would just move it off axis, right? And then drop that in there, like so. Come back on. Okay. Alright, and then yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm touching on the bottom. I'm gonna zero my quill and I'm I'm only gonna go about I got this idea uh when I was kind of thinking about this. This'll basically traps this uh the guide rod that's in there now. If uh and I don't have to press it in, and then you can take it all apart afterwards. So it was kind of a, what do you call that, a uh, epiphany? I don't know, something silly like that. All right, so we're going to go in um, about 250 here. Actually, let's go in about 300. Are you enough? sit there and idle in that very long. Okay, so we're not through. Now we just gotta get that out of there, right? Yeah. <laughs> gotta think about it for a sec. <laughs> kind of weird, right? So that comes out. Okay. That comes out. And then, uh, so there, see it's blind in that. And so my little rod, my guide rod, will just pop through like that and bottom out and then the top plate traps it in there uh, like so okay anyway I thought it was a good idea all right well something I for, forgot to do here uh, when I was drilling these holes and it's probably not necessarily a bad thing is there's a uh, 60 degree included angle chamfer on this that's kind of a lead in and a seat excuse me for the tapered part of the pipette um, now I've already done one just to try it out and it works fine. Um, but this is kind of a, actually a slightly spooky operation because the plastic is so soft. And when you have a, a, uh, a single flute countersink like this, it's, uh, it wants to snag and bite and it's a suck fest. It wants to suck this up. And um, I had a very bad experience many years ago uh, with a brand new single flute countersink and some soft plastic and uh, basically it instantly drilled uh, that size hole through the, my part and uh, scrapping that part. So what I'm doing here is I got some mini pallet clamps under there and these prevent this from sucking up but I can still move this around and just position it with the holes and I got the depth stop set here. Now I'm going to go fiendishly slow here and uh, you know I'm basically just holding it down it finds a center and then I just drill till I hit the stop or countersink till I hit the stop and there's <laughs> very little chance of a uh, of a suck fest <laughs> so uh, Anyway, so if you're using single flute tools on, uh, on plastic that are real sharp and the plastic's real soft, um, you can have some problems. 
So probably won't bore you with all the uh, all the holes here. So you go through the trouble to set something like this up and uh, and you don't have a problem. It's it's the time that you don't set it up, that's when you have trouble. So anyway, there it is. Okay, so here's where we're at right now. So we've got the rods in there and uh, the top's attached. Bottom shelf's done with tap toll and all that. So now we got to do a little sheet metal work. We're going to make these clips here now. Um, and this is just a this is a freebie prototype for the uh, for for dad. So uh, um, I'm going to use this. Uh, I happen to have some kind of heavy strapping material here that I found. Um, so I'm just going to bend some clips to try out of this to start with. And if this works the, as expected, um, I'll get some. Uh, I'll order some stainless that's roughly the same thickness, some spring stainless. So that'll be in the next episode is the little clips. This is uh, probably it for this one here. But uh, we made some good progress on that. And it uh, looks kind of nice, huh? Uh, compared to old sc Scungy over here. So uh, anyway, thanks for watching that. Okay, so we're here on the lathe. And um, I had mentioned that, uh, that I bought some... Um, some Morse taper adapters here uh, recently from Travers and uh, you know these are just to adapt to the different uh, Morse taper sizes now this one is a uh, um, it's a number four on the outside and a number one on the inside and the reason I got this one was that I have this trippy little deal here it's a little tailstock turret um, that happens to have this little spindly number one uh, Morse taper on it so we need an adapter. Well, the idea here is um, this is a little turret attachment here, so you can have more than one centerline tool in the tailstock uh, without swapping things out, which is kind of neat. So this would actually be kind of a cool little project to, to build for yourself. Um, not super difficult, you know, you got to do some good machine work. And um, um, anyway, uh, it allows you to do some stuff like. Uh, center drill, drill, tap, and countersink, you know, bink, 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 right? So let's put it in there. Now, like I said, I bought this uh, this number four here, and um, but it's got a little problem here when we just go direct to a four. Um, is it hits the, uh, the the quill there? So let's get oops, let's get that out of there. Um, pop that one out back so what I have to do is I got to do it in two steps here um, I got to go to a two here and then go to go to a uh, the two yeah then go up here and what that does is, is that sticks it out just far enough that uh, that I can operate oops hey it see it works um, that I can operate the uh, the lever here so the way you would use this is um, now it's got these these goofy bushings um, but you can make up bushings to, to fit a bunch of different stuff here so let's just say we have a center drill in there so we do we drill with a center drill and then we shift to a drill now we drill with that okay and then we can go to a tap and uh, we can tap or if we didn't want to tap first, we can countersink first or whatever. So you get a bunch of different positions. So um, anyway, it's kind of a neat tool. Um, I've used it like once. Um, I think I had, well, it's got a 1032 in there, it looks like. Um, I had a, a bunch of stuff to tap or something, and it, it, it ended up being worth setting up and getting going because uh, there was enough stuff to do that it made sense. Now, this one is... Uh, this one's made by Enco. Um, I do not believe they sell this anymore. Um, although maybe you can find one on Fleabay or something like that. But uh, uh, heck, Adam's probably got four of these in his uh, in his garage in there. So uh, um, anyway, so it's a little tailstock turret, Model A Enco, 
Um, kind of neat, and I thought I'd show you guys. Okay. Oops, says something else in there. WTW. It's got a little ID number engraved in it, so maybe we'll take it apart and uh, see what the guts look like.